Now let's have a look at the individual pipeline steps that correspond to what we saw in the diagram earlier. We have now our pipeline run that executed successfully and here we can already see well, a bunch of things that actually were executed as part of our pipeline and now we would like to have a closer look at how we define so-called tasks and steps and well what it actually does under the hood so we will individually look into each and every task of our uh, java project pipeline so first of all in our dashboard we can see actually the execution here um, which shows the individual pipeline run and we could also have a look at the logs um, with the command line. So here we see a bunch of boxes already that correspond to so-called tasks. So these are the tasks that we defined. And in this case, these are the task runs. So similar to a pipeline run, there's also a task run. And this corresponds to what we defined in the pipeline here in our repository in the tasks. So what is a task? A task is a running part of our pipeline within Tecton and a Tecton task corresponds to a running pod in Kubernetes. So a task will actually be um, executed by a, um, uh, in a pod. And then similar to pod versus containers, we can actually define so-called steps within a task. So we, uh, a task can later on define multiple steps that will be executed as a container within that pod. So a task corresponds to a pod in Kubernetes and a step corresponds to a container and the task has to have at least one step. And also there's a difference task, not necessarily don't, um, have to run in a, in a SQL way. So in order that we define it. So this is why um, here we can specify tasks and then we specify when they're gonna run. So this means that this task, for example, has to run after the other tasks. And this is then if you uh, remember the diagram, how we build up these boxes and the arrows, how we connect, can connect them. So now we have a few task definitions here and let's quickly go through them. At first, we would like to build our Java application and build our Docker image. So I have a task that I call build Java app, which actually has a reference to a task definition. So this is a task um, definition in our pipeline and it references a specific task that also, of course, has been created via a YAML file. And this is this task definition in Tecton. And this Tecton task, um, it's called, not, not the deploy, the build Java app, this one. Um, it's called build Java app. It has also certain parameters and the workspace that it works, um, that it uses. And it has a few step definitions. So within this task, these definitions will run as containers in order and they have to run successfully. Otherwise, the task is failed. And then this task is uh, referenced in the pipeline. So let's check out what's, uh, what's happening here. We have this workspace available, this app source that we remember is provided by this empty directory. So we have just something available where we can actually well check out our project. So there are a few different ways how to handle Git resources, but this is now the recommended one that we actually use a task step, a step within the task to uh, um, check out the Git resources. And what we do, well, very similar to containers, now we of course have to specify um, an actual image, right? So the image of our build step that contains all the um, information and all the tools required to execute whatever we would like to do. So in our case, we just um, do the git checkout and we have to, well, actually make some uh, configuration to use these resources and especially use the secrets provided. So the um, SSH secrets um, that I showed earlier um, and how to uh, how to uh, configure that is going to be um, injected into our running container within the step. So this is uh, quite handy. And, and depending on how we uh, check out the Git repository, we can configure that. And this is now the first step within our task. We can actually have a look at here you see the corresponding steps within the task at our dashboard or of course the command line to see, okay, what's actually happening here. And then you will see the output of this container where it actually checks out the Git repository to the workspace. Workspaces are shared among task steps. So within all of these steps, this workspace will, will be available. We use this as uh, the working directory. So this means that once we checked it out in the first step, the next step, will actu which actually will be a different container, also different Docker image, will still have all of the resources available here. So all of the files. 
in this case we have our workspace with our coffee shop project so now it's going to be checked out and then we can simply say well maven clean package in this case and then that is what is running in our container this corresponds to the second step here you can see well this looks familiar for maven projects this is actually the maven output in that container that used this repository that has been checked out earlier so this is why these steps have to run in order and they can use the files that previously were uh, created in a works uh, in a workspace if we share these workspaces what is the case here so for the java project that is already how we can uh, do maven builds and now of course well we want to have a docker image and i use this builder technology here that now also needs the information of the repository why well first of all the information of the repository because of the docker file that we need to reference but also the used um, uh, the used resources uh, like the uh, job file here that we built so if you check out um, the project you will actually see a docker file that has a resource um, um, a copy a resource definition to a job file that will be copied from target so this is why we need to reference the same workspace to use that and then we can build our docker image here in this case we have a volume mount by by just mounting this of uh, our uh, lib containers directory here why well because that has uh, a security uh, concerns uh, or security reasons and also the reason that we can here build the image in one step and then use that for pushing the image so we still have the image available here uh, or potential we could do it in one uh, one step as well that now pushes the image to our uh, docker registry if you have a look at uh, where that image comes from so basically we have the revision that is the commit id build revision uh, of the parameter where does that come from that is provided in the pipeline so we see okay this is actually going to be the revision that will be the commit so we see this later on how to put these things together and then we have the URL of the Git um, app image, um, and the app repo, and the app image. The app image is the image name. So I can show you the example of the pipeline run, actually, which will be our Git repositories, and here the app image of just that example image, and an example commit ID that will be checked out. So in this case, what we will do, well, here we will see, we check out the repository with that specific ID, and then we built our image with image name colon image tag which is the commit id and here the same we just push this to our docker registry so this is where these information come from in our case we use the commit id as image tag all right now we have the next step in our pipeline now we want to deploy something so in order to deploy what you saw in the diagram earlier well we need to so here we see the other um, output by the way from a docker build and push we need to deploy on our um, uh, to our environment so again how we do this is we use this GitOps way to make changes to our git git ops to our config uh, repository and then apply that in our case via argo so this is our config uh, repository the same uh, what i opened in my IDE and then we have the resources for production and system test available here as well as here and these resources now need to be updated for our coffee shop application and this update also will happen within our Tecton pipeline so this happens within our task we have a deploy task and actually now I have one task definition for deploy which I can parameterize for different environments so we check this out we have the second the different workspace for the config uh, repository for our GitOps repository and here we will see the parameters the workspace and well also there will be another you can actually further uh, configure how your tasks um, uh, how the parts look like is that we inject uh, the Argo CD secret why we because we actually need access to our Argo from within the Tecton pipeline what you saw in the diagram but first of all we have one step to please check out our repository now a different repository for our workspace and now we need to update our yaml file which now goes to that specific directory of the environment 
for example, production or system test. And then we have a, sp a specific structure with our YAML files. For example, we have our coffee shop .yaml that just has our app definition. I can show you this in this repo actually what it uh, corresponds to. So this is a Kubernetes deployment, Kubernetes service. So these are the resources that actually deploy our application. And then we see, okay, we have an image um, reference and some, you know, revisions, some annotations that we just would need to update. So a few things need update here. And we do this in our case, just on the command line via some tools. So whatever you choose just has to be available in that, um, in that image. And then of course, well, we need to apply these changes. And since we use this GitOps way, we need to push the changes to a GitOps um, repository here. So this will be done by this Tecton, the technical user, and then we push it to the repository. And then we just ping to our Argo server and say, well, please now sync and also wait until this has been successfully applied. So it basically ask our Argo, tell us whether this worked uh, successfully and wh whether everything could be rolled out um, nicely. So that is the definition of a deployed task. And we have our task run that we can see in our um, dashboard. So this is specifically that task with these um, um, parameters or with, uh, with these arguments. And now we check out our Git here as well for the master branch. We update our revision to that specific commit ID, which in this case means that we update the image. So we uh, update the image reference that we created earlier. And then we commit and push to that git config and we need to wait. So this is the Argo CD command line. We actually make sure that Argo then triggers the update and we wait until, until this is up and running and healthy and has been successfully applied. Now we have the case where we have a running system test environment. So this has been updated and deployed. And now the next step is to run the system tests. So again, we have these references that we just have to run one after another. If we, if we had some tasks that could run in parallel, then we could um, define this differently. But in our case, that's just a sequence because we need to wait for the deploy step until we can actually run the system tests. And now we have this uh, system test task that we can also, also parameterize. For example, what is the gateway URL for our tests? And we still need access again to our app git repository. Why? Well, actually, because the system tests reside in our app repository as well. So now the app has been built already. But just for the system test, we need access for these resources as well. So this is somewhat similar to the Maven steps. Why? Because we use Maven to run the system tests. And since our workspaces in my uh, case, um, are cleared with this empty deer, we need to check it out again. And then we run our Maven system test, which resides in that system test project. In our case, we use Maven verify for the surefire. And we need to set these system properties for the gateway so that then it uses the correct um, URL, which is now um, how we access our system test um, part of our cluster. You can see this in that's the checkout in the logs here that we can actually now access this URL that I configured and then just tries to create all of these things and verify whether our application works correctly in that functional way. So this tests the function. And um, if you remember the, um, the testing video course, if you watch that, it will also use our mock server, Wiremock, what I use, that also has been deployed uh, to Kubernetes, to that namespace. So this actually um, works well to run that system test here. And then we are very certain that everything will work as expected because this image then behaves correctly once that is successful. And then in the next step, we can already say, now please deploy to production which actually uses the same deploy task that we showed earlier. Now, just with the different, um, different values for the parameters. We have the production environment that is just a different uh, directory where these resources reside. We need to uh, tell the Argo app name. So this is the Argo application that just makes sure that it syncs the correct things. We will provide again the GitOps repository and the image which one to 
uh, to deploy using the correct version. So this is very similar to what you saw before, just using different values here. So this uses again this deploy step. And then we can actually see that this works here as well. This is now just updating a different image. So that is the different parameterized way. And then we actually, as the last step, can already um, check out the smoke tests. If you would like to have a look at these uh, resources here at these changes. Now, if I just pull the latest changes, we actually see the changes that have been applied here. So this just see um, shows the Tecton pipeline, how it updated to these revisions. And this is actually pushed to the same uh, repository that we use here to the master branch. Now, as the last step, we still have the smoke test, which is only, well, just a smoke test to see whether everything is up and running. So it doesn't uh, create some new resources because that's already production. And we don't want to create new coffee or it is in production here just for tests. And this uses a very similar way that this, uh, than the system test, just a different, um, different folder or different definitions. So again, we have this um, run smoke test task definition with just the gateway that we want to use, the app URL, the revision of our commit. And this is the smoke test here. This is what, uh, what we do. Same way we check out the app that we have and we run our uh, smoke test, which just runs now a Maven failsafe. So these are integration tests that reside within the normal coffee shop uh, that we also point to this um, to this gateway. So basically where our production um, application resides and here in the log we can see this. Now we go to the production URL and just check whether it's up and running. And once that is the case, this was the last step and the last task. Then the pipeline has been executed successfully. Everything is green here, which we can also see in the logs or if we check out the Tecton dashboard. And this means that we successfully deployed to production.